Dylan, we're out here at Liberty Park Plaza Wine Experience where we are so lucky to have wineries from both Canada, or Niagara on the Lake region, and New York, their Finger Lakes region. I'm here with Jared from Hillitary Estates Winery. Yeah. And we're so excited to have him here. He's going to share a little bit about the experience that you guys can have this weekend at Great Bus Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, September 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th at the 31st Annual Great Bus. Thanks for being here, Jared. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, first time in Texas, and uh, it's been amazing so far. Uh, awesome. We've had some great meals, we've had some barbecue, uh, we've had some amazing chili, and some wonderful Texas wines, which are going to be featured here as well. Uh, but I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, what we're bringing from Canada to share with you. Um, so I'm from a region called Niagara-on-the-Lake. Um, now if you want to think about this on the map, we are just south of Toronto by about one hour. Um, and just 20 minutes further south from us would be Niagara Falls, which I think everyone is very familiar with. Um, now people usually think when we talk about Canadian wine that first of all the question is Canada makes wine? <laughs> And yeah, we make some uh, very high quality vinifera wines, um, but we're not as far up north as what everybody seems to think. Um, if you were to draw a line across the United States, we'd be hitting about Northern California with our latitude. So we are kind of in that typical belt for cool climate viticulture. Um, so in terms of geography, it makes perfect sense. Um, now to zoom into the region a little bit and to explain what's happening in terms of the soils, the geography, there's really two main reasons why we're able to grow high quality fruit and make high quality wine. Uh, to explain this, you have to go back 9,000 years. So it sounds, it sounds a little bit ridiculous, um, but 9,000 years ago was the end of the last ice age. So what was happening was our entire region was covered by a giant glacier. So it was about one mile of ice above us. And as the glacier started to melt and recede, it left all of the nutrients into the soils down by the edge of the lake. Mm -hmm. um, today, if you were to visit the region, you would notice that uh, there's a large ridge that follows the edge of Lake Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, this ridge used to be the edge of the lake. So where we're growing the grapes actually used to be all underwater. Oh, that's awesome. It's crazy. So when I was a little kid and we'd be playing in the sand, I'd be pulling up seashells and fossils of kind of uh, sea creatures and sea life. Uh -huh. So, but it's very, very rich soils. So that's the one aspect. The second part of this is we are right beside Lake Ontario. Now this is one of the biggest lakes within North America, one of the deepest lakes. Mm -hmm. And it is so deep that in the winter time it does not freeze over. So what this is doing is allowing the winds to blow off and help to moderate our temperature. So, you know, when you get to about, uh, again, I'm speaking Celsius because I'm from Canada, but for me, minus 22, I think that would be uh, probably about five degrees Fahrenheit. So very, very cold, but it is possible. At this point, you know, you'll start to have vines suffer and buds might die and you might have some problems. Mm -hmm. um, but Lake Ontario, because it's not freezing, the winds are keeping everything alive for us. Perfect. So, so is that how you guys get your amazing ice wine? Yes. So ice wine is definitely kind of what we're known for on the global scale. Mm -hmm. And we have a many beautiful ice wines here at the Festival to pour for everybody who wants to come down and chat. Um, but what we're doing for the ice wine, so two things are required. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to have a full growing season. So you have to be able to get fully ripened grapes. Okay, There's so no, how does that happen? It's just sunshine, it's having a nice warm summer, it's uh, just like ripening any fruit. It's important to have the right climate, the right amount of sun, um, but this is very important for all wines. Uh, and ice wine is included in this, because if the fruit is not ripe before the winter comes, it's not gonna taste very good. So that's the one side. The second side is we need to have a winter that is cold enough. Um, so what we're doing is we're actually harvesting the grapes in January or February. Ooh, chilly! <laughs> it is freezing. Now I do this personally, so I'm out there working. I have done this since I was 12 years old. Yeah. And you know, I work in these frigid conditions, usually around 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So very, very cold. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> so is there snow on the vines? There can be, yes. Oh, uh, wow. Usually it's typical to have snow kind of around. It's actually very, very beautiful. Um, even if it is cold, it's, it's a very picturesque kind of scene. Um, but what's happening is the water content inside the grape is frozen solid like a rock. So what we're doing is we're pressing it very aggressively and only the sugars and the acidity is being extracted. So it's kind of like uh, the nectar or the syrup of the grape. Okay, I heard you guys use 2,000 
thousands of times the regular pressure to crush those grapes. Two hundred times. Two hundred oh, times. Two, yeah, yeah. Which is still extreme, right? Because to, to press normal grapes, you're still using considerable pressure. Um, but yeah, for ice wine, it's much more aggressive, just because everything is so frozen solid. And for someone who has never tried ice wine, what would you tell them the flavor characteristics are? I would have to say that, I mean, for here, we're primarily showing the Videl grape. So each different type of grape that we're working with is going to have different flavor characteristics. Um, the Videl for itself is very tropical. So it has a nice acidity, so it doesn't taste like overbearing with sweetness. It's still very fresh in the mouth and very lively. Um, but you'll get lychee fruit, uh, you'll get some honey, some melon, um, a lot of very tropical, lively notes. And so it's a lot of fun. Like when you drink it, it just explodes in the mouth. And oh, I love it. You're guaranteed to smile. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. So, so who else is here representing um, Canada? So we have many of my friends. I mean, Canada, we are a very small producing uh, country. So I know all of these wineries very well. Um, so we are from Pillitary Estates, as you had mentioned. Uh, we have Ponsman Estate Winery, who's actually just up the street from us. They're right on the shore of uh, Lake Ontario. Very beautiful winery. Uh, Family-run business, just like we are. Um, and they make some fantastic wines. Um, we have Keller Estates. Uh, uh, Inniskillen and Jackson Triggs, which are kind of the larger wineries in our area. Um, so they have a very good global reach. They are exporting around the world. Um, Inniskillen in particular was kind of the founder of ice wines in Canada. So they were the first uh, winery to really do an ice wine harvest. Uh, 1983 was the first year when they pulled off uh, the grapes. And I believe 1983 they actually left the grapes for ice wine for the first time, but the birds ate everything. Oh so, no! So 1984 was the first harvest. Okay. Well, you can imagine, right? It's yeah. the winter time, everything is frozen, and you have birds everywhere, and they see this fruit on the vine. Yeah. So we're constantly trying to fight off the birds. <laughs> and how does one do that? Uh, well, we have uh, bird bangers. Okay. So that is uh, like a propane cylinder that sounds like a shotgun. And we have them out in the fields, and they spin around, and they shoot off randomly. So it's actually kind of funny because we'll have tourists come and visit and they'll be doing the bike tours yeah. and going down beside a vineyard all of a sudden that thing will blow up right beside them <laughs> and they get startled and they don't know what happened but uh, yeah that's that's a bird banger so we're, we're very used to it. Um, finally the other winery is uh, Rife Estates Winery. Now they're again very good friend, friends of the family, I know Klaus Rife very well. Um, they are immigrants from Germany whereas my family came in from Italy. And this is all kind of the early 1950s. And uh, Rife Estates, again, makes very high quality wines, very respectable, respectable winery. And, um, you know, it's not just the ice wines. We have here uh, some beautiful white wines, red wines. Um, in our region, we're growing a lot of, uh, primarily it's all vinifera, which is, uh, you know, Riesling grapes, Chardonnay. We do some Pinot Grigio for the whites. Uh, for the reds, uh, we're doing Merlot, Cab Sauve. But Cabernet Franc would be the most popular red wine in our area. Yeah, so. Ooh, goodness, well it sounds like you have some amazing wines out here. Everyone, you have to make sure to get out to Liberty Park Plaza Wine Experience presented by the Gaylord Texan. You can visit with Jared, talk with him more about ice wines and all the amazing wines that are out here. You can get tickets at greatfest.com and that's for Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, September 14th, 15th, 16th and 17th or you can buy tickets here at the festival. Um, we'll see you in historic downtown Grapevine soon. Goodbye.